I had been in the archaeology program for a couple of years now, and opportunities to go out into the field for real, actual experience were hard to come by. So when the professor asked our class if we wanted to come out with him, of course we said yes. We all brought our packs with the usual supplies, water, extra clothes, sleeping bags, etc. But mine had something extra, a new sonic imaging system that I'd been working on in my spare time. I like to fiddle, sue me. We separated into groups and began to explore the ancient tomb, walking carefully and obeying all the rules that had been drilled into us for how to respect a site. What followed was hours of digging and exploration that yielded nothing. This was pretty normal. The vast majority of potential sites yielded no great discoveries, or even any minor ones. But even though going empty-handed was common, it was still disappointing every time it happened. Everyone wanted to make the next great discovery. And the reality that this would not be that day was never fun, even if it was expected. Tired and bored, I pulled out my sonic imaging system and aimed it at the floor of the tomb, and was shocked. According to the imaging, a hundred meters beneath the tomb was a vast structure that extended almost endlessly in every direction, and if the images were correct, this structure predated the tomb by hundreds of thousands of years. Not eager to be laughed at and aware that this represented a potential major discovery, I kept my findings to myself and packed away my equipment, rejoining my fellow students as if nothing had changed. But in fact, everything had. And if this were what it appeared to be, nothing would ever be the same again. Later that night, while everyone was asleep, I slipped away from the campsite and returned to the tomb. Upon arrival, I pulled back out my sonic imaging system and looked at the images in more depth. The structure appeared to expand thousands of meters in all directions, with what appeared to be columns spread intermittently throughout the space, and many other objects were present. Things that I could not identify from the scans. But near the tomb, I saw an opening that began about 50 meters down. And at that moment, I made a decision. I would have to go down. I took a shovel and began digging, thinking it would take multiple nights to get to the opening. But when I'd been digging for about 90 minutes, it was like something opened up and sucked me in almost as if it had been expecting me. I lost my balance and fell. When I landed, I stood and looked around me and marveled. The space was old, wet, and dark, with ceilings that were dozens of meters high, as if it had been built by beings much larger than men. There was no light, but when I activated my flashlight, the beam bounced around the room as if the walls were soaking up the light to quench an ancient thirst. I started to have a bad feeling, but reminded myself that no great discovery comes without risk. So I pressed on. As I walked further in, I began to see ancient writing on the walls. I pulled out my camera and began taking pictures of everything around me. I'd seen ancient text before. Sanskrit, Aramaic, Phoenician. It was endemic to my field. But this looked different, non-human, as if it weren't meant for the eyes of men, my eyes. Further in, I saw images that appeared almost like faces, but unlike any faces I had ever seen. They were 10 meters high and foreboding as if they looked me over and found me wanting. I felt as if I were somewhere I didn't belong and wasn't welcome, but many explorers had felt like this and come out all right, and I refused to let the nervousness stop me, so I continued on. After walking for almost an hour, I came to what looked like nothing less than a large terrarium. 
and there were plants everywhere I looked, but they appeared to have died centuries ago. I took some samples and stood to walk onward, but then I heard a rustling and before I could turn fully around to look, I felt something around my ankle, something moving. With a sudden jerk, I fell and was on my back. A large vine was around my leg. Before I could move, other vines had captured my remaining leg, my arms, and my neck. And they began to squeeze. The plants had me in a firm grip. And with the pressure they were applying, it was getting hard to breathe. For a moment, I thought that my last moments would be spent here. Lying on a stone floor surrounded by a discovery I'd prayed for for years. But no, I would not give up. The world needed to know about this, and in order to tell them, I had to escape with a last ditch effort. I pulled my right arm free, with it, I grabbed the shovel that I kept in my pack, and hacked at the vines over and over again until, with the final pull of my legs, they let me loose. I could have swore I felt something from them. Something akin to frustration and regret. Catching my breath, I looked around and saw other vines pulling away from me. I can't believe I was such a fool. If the plants had died centuries ago, there would have been no remains at all. Regaining my feet and recovering my supplies, I took a few more pictures and decided I had enough evidence. Between the pictures and my imaging scans, I could document my find and how I discovered it. It was time to go. I began to imagine the reception I'd receive for discovering one of the greatest archaeological findings of the century. Perhaps the greatest. Books, talk shows, offers of tenure. The possibilities were endless. All I had to do was get back to the surface. But as I turned around, I realized I never would. There, standing before me, was a huge creature at least 10 meters high. It was covered in wet scales and had six appendages extending from its torso, each covered in three clawed digits. Fingers was too limiting a term. And most pressingly, it had a mouth filled with a hundred long, sharp teeth. It looked ancient, otherworldly. Terrifying. Hungry. They say that, in the presence of overwhelming fear, your brain can stop functioning normally. It must be true, for at this moment, I had only three thoughts. I would never become famous for this discovery. I would never see my mother again. And I had left the entrance open. Note, the proceeding was transcribed from an audio recording found near an abandoned archaeological dig site located in Redacted. The authenticity of the recording is inconclusive. The creator of the recording has not yet been located.